Well, when President Trump arrived here at Miami's federal courthouse, he surrendered himself for arrest and was formally booked along with his aide, Walt Nauta. The hearing itself lasted just under an hour and was presided over by the duty magistrate, Jonathan Goodman. The former president sat stone-faced, first with his hands clasped in front of him, and then, as the hearing proceeded, he crossed his arms. None of it was on camera. Mr. Trump's lawyer then entered a plea on the former president's behalf. We most certainly enter a plea of not guilty, the lawyer said. The prosecution did not request that Mr. Trump's passport be handed over, and there were no international or domestic travel restrictions placed on him. What's known as a personal surety bond was requested with no financial component, bail essentially, with no requirement to hand over money. It's all about classified documents found at Mr. Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, documents that he should have handed over to the National Archive when he lost the presidency. The National Archive realized that some were missing and asked Trump's team for them back. Some were handed over, but some remained missing. And in August last year, the FBI raided his home. More documents were found. 67 were marked as confidential, 92 as secret, and 25 as top secret. According to the indictment, they included information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the U.S. and other countries, as well as the United States nuclear program and the weakness of the national defense of other nations. A grand jury of ordinary Americans then concluded that the evidence against Mr. Trump was enough to pursue a prosecution. But why did Mr. Trump have these documents? What was the intention of taking them? We do not know. Mr. Trump has denied any wrongdoing. He claims that he was able to declassify the documents. Mr. Trump, why were you holding nuclear secrets, sir? Hey. Well, in social media posts on his way to court, Mr. Trump repeated the claim that all this is a politically motivated witch hunt. And on his behalf outside court, his lawyer said the decision to pursue the charges against him while turning a blind eye to others is emblematic of the corruption we have here. She said, we are at a turning point in our nation's history. She's referencing the case of the documents found at President Biden's home and in an office he once used. These cases are also under investigation and President Biden has not been accused of obstructing justice or trying to hide any documents, as President Trump is alleged to have done. Well, there will be legal arguments. Mr. Trump's defense team will try to have the case thrown out. They will argue that some of the evidence is inadmissible in court. They will try to delay the trial, potentially beyond next year's November presidential election. And honestly, it is impossible to know quite how all this will play out, either legally or politically, or frankly, in society. Mr. Trump commands a large following in America. Remember, well over 70 million people voted for him in 2020. How many of them remain loyal? And what about Republican politicians? What will they do? We just don't know. But it is clear that in communities across the country, Mr. Trump's message does resonate.